My name is Carlock, and today I'll be sharing with you my video presentation about myself. Uh, I joined the Autonomous Driving U19 and it's just myself in the team. I'm from Singapore and I started robotics at nine years old and this is my first year in RoboCup. The mission is to get the robot to the finish line as quick as possible while going through all the checkpoints. The problem was was how, how to find the shortest path to complete the mission. The methods I used was that I used a best paint to find out what, what routes look like the shortest distance to complete the map and try, try the routes in the map with a fixed max speed of 50. The results that I, would, I will know what route, route is the fastest. Uh, the conclusion is that uh, the route that looks short that looks short might not actually be the fastest route. The challenge is to get to point, point A to point B as fast as possible. The challenge can be broken down to mini tasks. The first mini task is, to, is taking the robot from the start to the first checkpoint. And the second mini task is to take the robot to the first checkpoint and to the second checkpoint and repeat this until the finish line. The overall mission will be solved if all the mini tasks is complete because the robot will have gone through all the checkpoints and finished the map. I use proportional line tracking and gyro. The tools I use is this website. And the advantage is that it is easy to find what I need if I forget an algorithm. Again. I mainly use proportional line tracking algorithm to have a smooth line tracking gyro. And I use gyro to turn to a specific angle consistently. Again. This is my flow chart for my proportional line tracking. Uh, the I, IR L3, if the IR L3 senses black, it, it will add five to position, which I shorten down to pause, and will add one to count. And it will, it will continue IR L2 sense black, it will add negative three to pause, and, and add one to count. And if IR L1 sense black, it will add negative one to pause and add one to count. And we'll continue for R1, R2, and R3. But now the pause, the position is now not negative, it's positive. After this, if the count is more than one, which means if <coughs> if one or more sensors sense back, it would do it would it would uh, change position to position divided by count, which means it will find the it will roughly find the center point of the line. And if position is more than one which means if the, it would guess that the, the line is, is on the left side of the robot, it would do this. And the default speed is set by myself in the variable. And if it's not more, if it's not more than zero, which means it's on the right side, it would do this. And, okay, this is my pseudo code for my proportional line tracking. Uh, I would set position to zero, count to zero to reset everything. And if I R L three senses black, it will add pos position by negative five and add count by one. If I R L two senses black, it will add position by negative three and add count by one. And if I R L one senses black, it will add position by negative one and add count by one. And for L I R R one, R two, R three, it will be the same numbers. As, as R, R1, L1, L2, and L3, but the position numbers are just not negative. As you can see here, one, three, and five. And if count is more than zero, the position equals to position divided by count. And if position is more than zero, it would, it would do this, and else it would do this. And this is my flow chart for my gyro. And it's actually quite simple. If the rotation is more than 80 and less than 180, I would, it, if it's yes, I would set the duration to zero, stopping the whole program entirely. And if it's a not, it will repeat the whole thing there again. And this is my pseudo code. It's really simple. Just rotation Z is less than 80 and more than 100. You just set the duration to zero. The robot does not plan encoded because there's so many objects everywhere that interferes with the sensors like the buildings, 
and lampposts. To fix the issue, I would retry the program to see if the one if if the mistake was a one-time thing. And if it's not working consistently, then I would look at all the sensors and see what activates the code. An example was at the first turn, the robot was, was turning too much to the right and I was confused because I was using proportional line tracking and it was pretty slow speed. I was using an ultrasonic sensor to do a second turn. The problem was the lamp was activating the turn too early. I set my ultrasonic sensor to sense uh, when it's under 20, it will turn right. Because I wanted to make this turn over here with this wall, but I didn't expect it that this lamppost would interfere with the ultrasonic sensor. As you can see here, the ultrasonic sensor is 20. The, the solution was that it is to, is to set a condition to activate the turn when the gyro rotation Z is in between two, 350 and 10 degrees. Because as you can see here, the rotation Z is not at 300, 350 and 10 degrees, so it wouldn't activate. Until it reaches this straight line here, it would activate and sense the wall and turn right. The results of the competition was a bit unexpected, as I didn't know, did not know how strong other countries were. If I was, I was given a chance to solve the same challenge again, I would use more time to keep up, keep, keep trying out my program. I've learned that it's very inconsistent uh, in cold space robot when at max speed. Uh, I have gained that the maps in the competitions do not have shortcuts. And I would like to share that to, to the other cold space game players that to focus most of your time on line tracking uh, as it is basically 85% of the whole program. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy.